show this late 3 o'clock hour. Grayson Grunhafer, Sikkim365.com and 365 Sports. Follows like a hawk recruiting the transfer portal and much more. And joins Craig and Paul. I'm David Smoke. Grayson, uh, have you had any kind of feedback whatsoever on Daquan Finn at Baylor University, the quarterback out of Toledo? You know, not a ton quite yet. Now, remember, he's going to have his visit through tomorrow afternoon. So he will have been at Baylor for roughly three days, kind of like a normal official visit would be for a high school recruit as well. Um, but yeah, nothing nothing substantial yet to report on kind of anything other than, you know, the same that you would hear, the visit's going well, things like that. That's about it. Um, but obviously, some very intriguing news that came out today, which I'm sure we're going to talk about just literally like mm-hmm. 30 minutes ago about Malik Murphy. But I, I think right now it's important to remember that, you know, Baylor bringing Daquan Finn on a visit first. He's the first quarterback to take an official visit to Baylor since the transfer portal opened. He's also the first offer that they put out at the quarterback position and technically the only offer uh, until I believe about 30 minutes ago. But yeah, th- this is a very interesting situation. And Ben, obviously a very, very good player, the max player of the year this past season. And it's been really, really good the last three years. Honestly, I, I know a lot of people just talk about this past year, but he's got a lot of reps behind him, a lot of experience behind him, which makes you, you know, really optimistic about what he could bring to the table at Baylor uh, for his one year of eligibility. Um, so you know Baylor's definitely looking at him and definitely making him a priority right now on this trip. So if it comes down to it, Grayson, who would they rather have? Yeah, you know, I think that that is a, one of those questions that I think is hard to answer at this very moment just because you got to remember Murphy entered the portal yesterday. I mean, this was a quick, quick turnaround and process for him to decide where he was going to visit to try to get visits in before the dead period on Monday. And he put down three of them. I believe it's Duke, Baylor, and then Oregon State, the third. Um, so, yeah, I, I think that it's still up in the air. I, I think as of right now, I would probably um, think that Finn is probably the fit just because you would have, you know, him and Sora Robertson uh, kind of stack these next two years. But on the flip side, guys, Malik Murphy, I, I mean, a physical specimen, a guy who's been working with Steve Sarkeesian for two years now, a guy who's 19 years old still at this very moment. He doesn't turn 20 till February. Um, just the, 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 just thinking about his talent and thinking about what he could become, the ceiling is very, very high there. Uh, but I do think that you're obviously taking on some inherent risk. Uh, if you're going to bring in someone who's, you know, only really played, you know, a handful of meaningful snaps, two games this past year is really the only you know substantial evidence that you have about you know who he is and what he is currently even if you think the future is really really bright for him were you shocked to see that that Baylor visit come across uh, social media a few minutes ago or were you kind of expecting that maybe they could be involved you know I think the the bigger shock for me was that Baylor got the official visit before the dead period I, I kind of felt like they might bring in another quarterback later kind of see what happens with Daquan Finn and then go from there uh, once the port, you know once things reopen after the dead period and at the very beginning of January um, so yeah I was a little surprised to see them get another quarterback on a visit so quickly but I do know the staff is working tirelessly to try to get guys that they want on campus these next couple days um, so it's going to be I mean fast and heavy I mean they got one of their priority offensive linemen on campus um, today, I mean, there's just a lot of moving parts and a lot of a lot of time and effort, I think, buddy, being put into getting guys that they want on campus right before this initial dead period to maybe, you know, add some commitment before things close up for a little bit. You think it would be disappointing if they didn't come out with a quarterback this weekend and or at least two or three transfers? Yeah, you know, I, I think that's probably where I'm at now um, because if you're getting two cracks at quarterbacks, and, you know, both of them having taken at least one official visit before Baylor, um, I, I do believe that now you're in a situation where you should be able to pick which one you like more. I mean, you should be able to, to make that decision after tomorrow um, and hopefully land one of them, right? Because, you know, it's two sides there. You know, Baylor can want their top guy all they want, but then on the flip side, you know, does that player want to go ahead and make a decision quickly? 
Um, my hunch is, is that, you know, both these guys are trying to take this process pretty quickly um, and, and find their next landing spot. And so I would, I would guess that Baylor's probably going to figure out who their quarterback is or who's going to be competing with Sora Robertson for that starting quarterback spot uh, by the end of this weekend. And then obviously, yes, I, I do think that they should land a couple commit uh, over the weekend as well. It'd be pretty disappointing if they didn't. Grayson, what do you think um, is the next domino to fall outside of quarterback in the transfer portal? Yeah, you know, uh, a rather interesting one that I, I think is maybe kind of a, a little bit of an obvious one, but I don't know if y'all caught this, but UNLV uh, transfer safety Cameron Jenkins entered the portal this week, um, and he's on official visit to Baylor this weekend, and of course he's the twin brother of Caden Jenkins. Um, and Caden posted something on his Instagram earlier this week with his brother in it. And it just kind of seems like that could be something that, that is in the work to have both Jenkins brothers on campus at the same time, which I would be rather interesting. Cameron had 32 tackles at UNLV this past year. He plays safety, which is a position that Baylor needs to address in the transfer portal. Uh, it almost makes too much sense. So I, I do think that that could be maybe the quickest domino to happen, but I, I do think that there's some other guys out there. Baylor's done a really nice job, I think, in this early uh, part of the transfer portal, getting guys that they want on campus. And now we'll see if they're able to close the deal and see if they're able to, you know, add some of these guys, uh, you know, to a commitment list before the dead period begins. Baylor's got their O-line coach. Uh, I was planning on asking you about that, but then I remembered that uh, there was a tweet I saw last night from one Alex Foster, longtime Baylor commit, that let it be known he would be visiting Austin this weekend, and Texas has long been a threat there. I know that previously you said you wouldn't be too worried about it unless he's scheduled a visit. Well, he's scheduling a visit the weekend before National Signing Day. So what are your thoughts on Alex Foster and this engagement from UT? Yeah, this is a huge turn, right? Because I think the more that we kind of talked about, you know, Alex and the more that, you know, we got past that initial wave of Texas interest, we started to see he took a visit to Baylor, got really excited, was all in with Baylor, came to another game before the end of the year, was all in with Baylor. Um, and now, just yesterday, I was literally exchanging messages with him, and he said he wasn't sure if he was going to sign even and, and sign meaning sign in December even. And so, you know, we talked about that a little bit and he said he's going to take obviously this official visit uh, to Texas. Um, but it is interesting. It, it seems like he is kind of torn right now on whether he signs early and maybe sticks with Baylor in the long run or gets to know Texas a little bit more, maybe drags out his recruitment a little bit longer into February, which obviously would not be ideal for Baylor just because they've spent so much time into this relationship. And um, Alex is a really talented player and, and a guy who is actually, you know, he and Kylan Reed are my top prospects in this class rankings wise. And so to lose a guy like that, especially in the trenches uh, this late in the process uh, would be very tough. Now, if you want to take an optimistic look or just kind of, think about it in a way that's maybe positive for Baylor is that if he does decide to flip to Texas, um, that would be another spot uh, for Baylor to potentially use uh, in the transfer portal. But again, I, I don't think that that reward is worth losing one of the most talented players in your recruiting class. Grayson Grunhaver, 365 Sports. Of the two that are on campus right now, Robertson and Martinez, who's now on scholarship, which of those two fits what uh, Jake Spavital wants to do, no matter who else might join the fray? Um, you know, for me, I, I really think that it's still Sora Robertson in that instance. And I, I think that the thing about him is that he's been in that air raid scheme. He obviously learned a lot from Mike Leach during his time at Mississippi State. And so I actually think he's a really good fit for this team. And that's why I don't think even if a quarterback comes in that, they should that he should be discounted at all. I think it's going to be an open competition. He's going to get an opportunity to go out there and compete uh, for the job. But I do think that Sawyer is a guy who's a really good fit. And he's got that dual threat uh, ability with his size, his strength, his speed. And I think that fits really well with everything that Jake Spavadol wants. And, you know, honestly, I think we got to see it a little bit last year, but his deep balls down the sideline. Um, those throws, which are going to be very important to spread teams vertically 
uh, in this offense were really, really impressive. So I'm curious to see him continue to uh, make that leap and continue to take that jump. But yeah, I think Sawyer is um, right now the better fit for Jake Babichol's offense. Thank you, man. Appreciate it. Grayson will be tied up with all those text calls, et cetera, when it comes to Finn, to Malik Murphy with official visit coming up tomorrow, and then also with a lot of others. And normally, let's be honest,